he believed in very vibrant color. Okay, so um, he would often just go to the store. He would buy a pure uh, pigment dispersion in oil. And he might just, because he loved the color so much, he might not add a lot of the paint medium to it. He might use it straight out of the can. Certainly, you can make an argument that there's a definite connection between the colors, the pigments that the artist chose, and his own spirituality. Throughout history, uh, some of the most beautiful religious works were painted to look out of this world, if you will. If you look at the old photographs, um, this place was decorated so boldly, boldly that it's, it's hard to imagine that he had any other intention than to sort of summon his spirituality and express it. He mixed his own cement um, and then painted it after he had done his sculptural work on it. Uh, unfortunately, cement is very porous, so it retains moisture. And so what, what would happen is the water would be trapped inside the cement. It wouldn't be able to get out because of this coating of paint. And literally, it started to break apart from the inside out. It's a huge piece of American art in general. It's the idea that he's taking non-Western influences, which is really different, I think, for especially his time period. And it's important that he used different color eyes that maybe, sh I guess, shouldn't be with that particular ethnicity. And part of his belief system was that he wanted all cultures to be harmonious, especially within this space, and he believed that one day they would be. It is an internationally recognized site. Uh, we feel it's an important cultural heritage site to not only Georgia, but to this, this particular region as well. I think he wanted you to come in here and feel something. I don't know what it is. Everybody does. And I think once it's finished, you will get something out of it. It's great to see one piece, but that's totally out of context. You need to see it how he wanted you to see it.